In an earlier episode, we learned about how you use battle plans to command your divisions. Today, we're going to take a look at how you can customize and upgrade those armies. And it all starts with the Division Designer. Historically, a division was generally an independent military unit, consisting of 10 to 20,000 soldiers. Every division in your military will always be based on a specific division template. You will start the game with only a few basic templates, but you can create new division templates or rename your existing templates and edit them throughout the game as you unlock better equipment. You can even change the symbol associated with each division template. Editing and creating new templates costs army experience, however, which is generated primarily through combat. A division in Hearts of Iron 4 represents an organized fighting unit of men and equipment. It is composed of up to five brigades, each brigade containing up to five combat battalions. There are three types of brigades, infantry, mobile, and armor. Infantry brigades can only contain infantry-type battalions, such as infantry, artillery, marines, and anti-tank guns. Mobile brigades can only contain mobile non-tank battalions, such as cavalry and motorized or mechanized infantry. Finally, armor brigades can contain only armored battalions, such as light, medium, or heavy tank battalions. Keep in mind this is not an exhaustive list, but simply an example of the kinds of battalions that exist in Hearts of Iron 4. Each division can also contain up to five support companies. Support companies provide special attributes to the division. For example, adding a support company of engineers will improve your entrenchment bonus when defending, as well as improving the division's ability to attack across a river or against an enemy fortification. There are 11 different types of support companies, but only 5 can be attached to each division, and you can't attach more than one copy of each type. Another restriction is that you can only select and add battalions and support companies that have been unlocked in your research tree. We'll examine that in the second half of this video. A division's fighting capabilities are directly determined by the type and number of battalions that are inside it. You can see the stats for the division located on the right-hand side. Each battalion or company that you add changes these stats. A division with only three combat battalions will cost less to produce, use much less supply, but also be much less effective in combat compared to, say, a division of 12 combat battalions. On the far right of the stats panel, you can see the amount of manpower and equipment this division will require when it is produced. We'll discuss more about how equipment is produced in the next video, but if your division does not have full equipment or manpower, it will suffer a penalty to combat. The bigger the deficit, the bigger the penalty. Note that while the stats on the right are important to understand, they are beyond the scope of this video series. Check back on this channel when the game is released for a more in-depth look at the full game, including these statistics. Now that we have a basic understanding of how divisions are composed, let's jump into the research side of things. The research trees are where you unlock superior equipment, tactics, buildings, and battalions throughout the game. Each nation starts with the ability to research up to three or four technologies at the same time and can gain more slots through their national focus tree to a maximum of five slots. All nations share the same research tree. Although the major nations have unique names and images for much of their equipment, this is simply for flavor. Light Tank 2 in the German tree is shown as a Panzer II, but has the same base stats as Light Tank 2 from Japan, which is shown as a Hago. Note that most of these trees have years listed on either the top or the side. This indicates that if you try to research a technology ahead of its historical timeline, your research efficiency will be reduced. The further ahead you try to research, the harsher this penalty gets. For example, if you try to beeline straight for Tiger Tanks starting in 1936, you might get them by 1939 or even 1938. But this ties up that one research slot for two to three years all by itself. That's equivalent to six or seven other research options which would not be subject to the ahead of time penalty. These opportunity costs are what you'll need to balance when playing Hearts of Iron 4. Would you rather have six or seven improvements from 1936 or roll out with Tiger Tanks two years ahead of schedule? One helpful tip is to examine the shape of each option. 
the large rectangles always unlock a new piece of equipment that will need to be produced in order to take advantage of it. The small squares will immediately unlock a new battalion type or provide an incremental improvement to existing equipment. Now let's take a look at each tree, starting on the left with the infantry tree. This line improves your infantry equipment, which is required by the vast majority of your battalions and divisions. The line on top represents support weapons such as machine guns, mortars, and also provides improvements to your general infantry units. Next is the motorized and mechanized line. This allows you to field infantry divisions which move across the map much faster and can keep up with the armored divisions, allowing you to spearhead through enemy lines to cut off their retreat. These last three lines unlock and improve the Special Forces Infantry. Marines are much better at amphibious invasions and river crossings. Mountaineers gain a bonus when fighting in hills and mountains. Finally, paratroopers are the only type of infantry that can perform paradrop missions behind enemy lines. The next research tree is for unlocking and upgrading support companies. These are the special companies that can be attached to a division to grant it special attributes. The top four can be researched right away, but the rest all require the motorized research to be completed and require additional motorized equipment in order to be built. You can find a link in the description with an explanation of all 11 support companies. Next up is the armor tree, which unlocks the ability to add tank battalions to your divisions. Note the three icons on the right of each tank. Once you've researched the main chassis, you can then research a variant for that chassis in each of three areas. Tank Destroyer, Self-Propelled Artillery, and Mobile Anti-Air. Once unlocked, these variants can be produced and added as battalions to your divisions, just like normal tanks. Fourth on the list is the Artillery Tree, which unlocks and improves artillery, anti-air guns, and anti-tank guns. We're going to skip over the next tab and go straight to the Naval tab. This tab unlocks and improves each type of naval unit in the game. You can see the dotted lines allow you to trace from a different class of ship. For example, you could ignore the Fuso and Congo class battleships and instead work your way down the battlecruiser line to the B-65, then jump down to the Tejima class battleship. Next up, we have the Air Force tree, which is split up by role listed along the top. Note that the three lines on the left-hand side each have a small icon in the top right-hand corner of the planes. This unlocks a carrier version of that role. It's simply a way of nesting the naval aviation tree in with the normal aviation tree to keep the interface from getting too cluttered. You can also see that there are some advanced designs down at the bottom locked behind jet engine technology. Jumping over to the engineering tree, we get a couple specialty options. The leftmost column provides you with radio and radar unlocks and improvements. Radio gives you some reconnaissance bonuses in combat, whereas radar helps you identify and intercept incoming enemy airplanes. The second column provides you with research bonuses down the center with encryption and decryption off to the sides. This is unfortunately the full extent of the intel system for the game at launch. If your encryption is better than the enemy's decryption, then you'll gain more accurate information about them, including division composition and movement, general country stats, as well as a small combat bonus. And of course, the right-hand side represents the advanced research, atomic bombs, rockets, and jet engines. The final tab in the list is the industrial tab. The first column here directly improves the production efficiency of your military factories, allowing you to produce more tanks, planes, and other equipment. These two columns provide an exclusive choice. The leftmost column represents concentrated industry and gives you the best raw output from your military factories. The right column represents dispersed industry, which provides a smaller bonus to raw output, but also provides you with more flexibility in your production lines and protects your industry against enemy strategic bombers. The construction line improves your civilian factories. These factories build and repair your infrastructure, air bases, fortifications, as well as your military factories. We'll go into more detail on military and civilian factories on the next episode. The final column unlocks and improves synthetic plants, which provide oil and rubber at the cost of using up one of your factory slots. Now let's head back to those other three tabs, Land Doctrine, Naval Doctrine, and Air Doctrine. 
Note that these do not have any years listed on the sides. For all three doctrine tabs, you can research as far down as you like any time without penalty. These trees provide significant combat bonuses to your land, air, and naval units, so it's recommended that you have one of your research slots always improving one of your chosen doctrines. For each tab, you can choose only one doctrine. You can always switch to a different doctrine later. For example, if you started down the Superior Firepower Doctrine and then decided later you wanted to go with Grand Battle Plan, you certainly could, but you'll lose all your progress and have to start over from the beginning. So in general, it's better to pick one land, one air, and one naval doctrine towards the beginning of the game and stick with it. Over the course of the game, you're likely going to be able to research a large chunk of these trees, perhaps as much as 60 to 75 percent. Researching deeply into a tree can grant a significant strategic advantage for a time, but at the cost of only being average or below average somewhere else in the research tree. You can't be the best at everything, and so you must choose. And that is exactly what a grand strategy game is about. If you enjoyed this video, check out the others in the series. There are links in the description. Next up, production and construction.